Sunday and the Order of the Red Ivy campaign. How's everybody doing today? Playing, 
flailing, it's nice to see you. Everybody in chat, how are you doing? It's time, ladies and gentlemen. The thing we've all been waiting for, and by all, I mostly mean me. Unsane Wolf, nice to see you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let me unleash the cast and we will get started. Ladies, gentlemen. Are we alive? We are. Yeah. Yep. Good. I see cats having internet problems. Just another typical day. Good. <laughs> Okay, hello? Welcome back. Hi, I don't know. It was doing it like way earlier today, like at noon or something, when I was trying to play with Justin and Divinity. It keeps going in and out for some reason. Well, hopefully we at least don't lose you on Discord and you can hear everything that's happening. Well, I might have to ask you to repeat yourself if like it sounds that's, like you cut out because, yeah. That's fine. Okay. I can get that too. I can repeat myself. I guess. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, welcome everybody. It's time to get started. I hope everybody's excited. Everybody's Super. characters are made. We've only got a couple characters that might immediately die. So <laughs> all in all, we're doing real good already. Um, As I've told everybody and anybody that's new, this is going to be a very story heavy campaign. There will be fighting, um, but there will be episodes where they don't get into encounters. They have to deal with things um, with their mind and their their speech and that kind of stuff. Um, however, there definitely will be times when uh, they have to fight for an entire episode because um, there's going to be a difficulty spike. So. Should be a good time for everybody. Anybody have any questions about their characters before we begin? Nope. Go, going once? No, I don't. Okay. <clears throat> All right, well. Everybody. Oh, Plummet's here. How are we doing, Plummet? Welcome. You haven't missed anything. Anyways. Welcome, everybody, to Alexandria. A religious kingdom built on the foundations of 12 different gods, worshipped by a council of 12, and controlled by those same people. This is a kingdom of men. Traders and merchants have power with money. You can find people of all races in these lands, but you'll mostly find humans and some dwarves closer to the city of Dwarian. Humans that grow up here tend to have a slightly higher chance of becoming racist uh, and bigoted. And it's not necessarily the friendliest place for non-human people to live at all times. Alexandria is a storied kingdom with a very turmoiled past. It's a war-fighting nation, and although it's at peace right now, the military is always prepared to be called into action at literally a second's notice. At the southern end of the kingdom, we're bordered by giant stone peaks of the Great Stone Mountain Range, in of which dwell the city-state of Dwarian and some military outposts. 
Off of those mountains, the rest of the kingdom unfolds as green rolling hills and farmlands, all the way to the northern shore, which is rocky cliffs and outcroppings. The western border of the kingdom is a huge, lazy river known as the Grey River. This marks the border between Alexandria and Valinesca. The giant lake that feeds this river off of the earthen mountains is known as the Silver Lake. And that's where the beginning of our story will take place. We find ourselves in the town of Hobloin, well, more like a city. It's on the eastern, I'm sorry, eastern edge of the river woods. It was originally built as a keep to support the river gate in case of a war with Valnesca. Since then, it has become a booming city with a large military presence and garrison. Hobloin itself thrives off of trade and is the passing point of good from goods from Alexandra and Dorian going into Valinesca and the rest of, well, everywhere. Because of this, there is a large customs house here that regulates the sale of goods and also regulates the tariffs and taxes needed for those goods to be successful. Hobloin sits on a hilltop and overlooks the woods to the east and the river that's beyond it. And although it once was just a castle, it has now expanded multiple times and added new areas, leaving distinct and clear districts walled off from each other. Our story begins inside a small inn known as the Pig's Tale. It's located in the first district of Hobloin, and it's run by a half-elf named Raven. It's also well known for being a place to have just a good time. It's always busy, there's always new travelers, old veterans, and people who just prefer the exterior of the city uh, instead of being near the keep. Rooms are reasonable, and the message board is always full of guilds and quests and things to look out for. And that's where we will start. So as our camera pans in, and we find ourselves in the dusty establishment of the pig's tail, we see many individuals. Humans, elves, dwarves, anybody that you could think of. It's busy, but it's got a calmness about it. And at a small table in the corner, we see a very tiny individual, a gnome. Would you care to describe to us what your gnome looks like? Me? Yes, you. Yes, I would. Um, my gnome is about, what is the basic height for a gnome again? Isn't it like two? You're no. like three feet. <laughs> like, yeah, like three feet. Yeah. So I'm like three feet tall. Um, I've got black like raven black hair and i've got it in two big giant poofy like side buns in the back of my head it's pretty much the first thing you see when you like when like you're looking through a crowd or something like the first thing you see is two little black buns um and i've got purple eyes that's that's about it very distinct very distinct next to this gnome who's quietly taking a drink and kind of looking around excited not used to this place, although she is from a big city. Um, sitting next to her is a small, well, not small, but a half-elfin man um, who happened to just be looking for an open table and sat down. Shijin, would you care to describe your character? About average build, about 5'9", uh, with light blonde hair, almost the color of wheat. Uh, judging at first glance, you can't quite tell if I'm either human or elf. Got black eyes and a general expression of zoning out. It's a good expression to have. 
especially around Tiny. Hi. <laughs> As these two sit here together, quietly, um, not really we're saying much. together? Yes, you're at the same table. Okay. Um, you were there first, uh, just enjoying your drink. He came in a little bit after. You had the only table that had any seats available. Um, okay. So he kind of just walked up and said, like, pointed to the chair and didn't really pay him any mind, so he sat down. Um, so you guys are sitting together. You haven't really said anything to each other much yet. Um, when all of a sudden the door to the tavern bust open and in trips a man in f- full plate armor. Falls face first onto the ground and then immediately stands up and tries to play it off like nothing happened. Much to the entertainment of the entire crowd. Dullahan? I'll have everybody in the room know that was on purpose, and now you all know my face. Thank you very much. My character is stupidly boyishly handsome, but as Mac so put it, obviously clumsy, because I can barely, you know, walk in a straight line without falling over my own feet. Um, I got long, long black hair, um, some super bright blue eyes, uh always totally clean shaven no dirty scrubble gonna grow on this face (laughs) um he's about six six foot two so he's really big and um muscular he's you know he's used to some manual labor but you know mostly sword fighting or glaive fighting since he has a giant glaive for one of his weapons and his full plate is obviously very aged, but super treasured, polished to like incredible detail. And on the chest plate piece is a symbol of an upright sword with two winged women on either side of it. As this happens, and you all look around. Uh, Kyler, you are understandably uh, a little embarrassed, but then again, maybe not. You're kind of used to everybody looking at you anyways, uh, especially from where you are or from where you're from. Um, So you look around and you do notice that the only table in this establishment um, is the table that our friends that we just described are sitting. Do you approach them? Well, it's the only seat in the place, and they look decently clean. I'll wander over and uh, I'll t- I'll take a seat. Decently. I won't I won't ask them. I'm just gonna sit down. Okay. Yep. I uh, before I sit down, I'll brush off the chair and then sit down. Don't want to dirty my armor. <laughs> As you guys uh, kind of sit here, uh, tiny he takes your eye for a second um his armor although antique is very shiny um you're also not used to seeing people in plate um you've seen people in armor before sure um but never actually up close like somebody in plate like a knight in a a fairy tale to you um so he's kind of intriguing as you guys continue to sit there a half elf man walks up, jet black hair, dark, dark eyes, but with this warm, friendly smile on his face. He looks around the table and says, Ah, well, I'm sorry we're so busy today, but uh, anything for anybody? Yeah, I'll take a thing of ale. Hey, ale, you got it. Uh, any Anybody else? Are, are we all together? Oh. Definitely not. Thing. Wait, wait, mister. Yes. Mister. Yes, small one. I'm like raising my hand like uh. really like <laughs> annoying. Mister. Hello? Yes, yes. I Can also you? want five pigtails. Five pig. T- Do you think Isn't that I... Place, s- doesn't this place have pigtails? That's what you're... What, what is this place called again? It... <laughs> Yes, young I mistress, it is indeed called the Pigtails. 
references. It, so it's called Pigtails, right? Like, so. It is, yes. Yeah, I, I will, will uh, I will see what I can do just for you. Thank you. Absolutely. Anybody else? Do no. you got any beer? I, I mean, we have ale, I guess is the closest. Um, uh, I'll just have water. Fancy one. Do you, want, do you want pigtails too? He says what's, they got them. What's em. the freshest meat you have? Uh, well, they butchered a bunch of hogs yesterday, so we've got some pork. We obviously have some pigtails for the bund one. Yeah. That would uh, seem to follow. Well, I, I'll take some of the pork and your finest bottle of red wine. Certainly. Ooh, he walks away, uh, leaves you guys to your own devices. He kind of like pulls up his sleeves. You can like as he walks away, you can kind of hear him go like, "Ugh, pigtails." <laughs> Um, but he like rolls up his sleeves and then like walks off to the back of the bar. Uh, and you guys are left to your own devices at that point. Red wine, huh? Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. That's what you it's, like drinking. It's likely the most clean of the drinks they have here. At least Is I it? have one. I like how you cleaned off the chair when you sat down, but you didn't clean off the food that you got in your armor when you fell over. That was a nice touch. Yeah, you got a little something something in your hair there. I think it's like some some potato? Maybe it's do, dust bunny. Do you wanna do you wanna pluck that out for me there, bun? Oh heavens no, that's disgusting. Why would I touch that? Yeah, and you got some potatoes under your arms too. I don't quite know if you can see that or not. Ew, he's got potato art hair. <laughs> um, eventually the waiter does come back. Or well, server. Uh, and he puts down a couple glasses. Uh, one is full of water. The other is a glass of ale. Um, and he does slide it to you, Tiny. Uh, and he says, uh, if you'll excuse me, mistress, it will be yep. a moment. The pigtails are rather fresh. Oh, good. I like them fresh. Okay. Have you eaten pigtails before? Eat them. What? Okay, fair. I'll be back. And he like walks away um, with a quizzical look on his face at you, specifically. <laughs> I grab the ale and I fucking chug that fucker. I'm going to uh, take a look at the water. Does it at least look clean? Yeah, it, it looks like it comes from a pretty decent cistern. Probably like a natural cavern or something like that. I'm going to pour a little bit on my hands and clean them and then I am going to take a small sip. You take a small what? Sip. Oh, okay. Yeah, again, as you take that sip, it's it's just straight water, you know? It's nothing crazy or anything like that. Um, I'm going to be busy cleaning my armor. <laughs> <laughs> and making sure that there is no potato in my hair. Right. Well, he does, and I chuckle to myself. All right, chug it. I, like, smash the thing down on the table, and I go, I wipe my... Wipe my mouth and my arm, and I'm like, ah, oh, that's good ale. So, do you guys eat pigtails? Like hair? No. Oh, what? You said pigtails, like in your hair? No, like actual no, she pigtails. Has buns. Can you not yeah, see? Yeah, these are buns. I can see that, but pigtails also happen in hair. You, you don't eat hair, do you? Oh, God, no. Well, but you eat pigtails? Hey, what is that supposed to mean? I don't know what you eat. I've never seen one before. Yeah. I've only read okay. about your type. Why don't you why don't you go back to shining your arm, you pretty boy? Your little armor? Yeah. You missed the spot right there. And a spot. And I spit on it. Wow. Uh, uh, at a right you about know. the time that you spit on it. <laughs> another character walks Crazy. in. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I set it on purpose. Um another character walks in. A dragonborn, black scales, uh, something that you guys have never really seen before. Forge? So, uh, 
I will have it known now that I am seven foot four and two hundred seventy five pounds of pure humor. Oh. That's really all you need to know. I'm just gonna take a quick look around, see if there's a uh, anything of worthy note. Um. So as you take a look around, you notice. A pretty, what you would consider to be an extremely busy and full establishment. Um, You notice a packed bar, tables full of people. In fact, there's only one table that you can see that's even got a couple chairs left open. Um, But you, it seems like a warm atmosphere to you and like a nice place. Um, You don't feel as outcast here. As you do just walking around like a normal city, you feel like it's kind of easier for you to blend in when you're inside here than it would be for you normally. Whoa, look at that guy. He just came in. He's so tall. Is, is there a circus in town? I bet he doesn't have any problems reaching anything on high shelves. What are high shelves? They're like high elves. Yeah. That's so much stuff that happens shelf. on Sundays. <laughs> So uh, of the uh, of the tables, what what ones have uh, seemingly empty seats? There's one that has two empty seats, and it's the one that this party is sitting at currently. All right. Well, at this I list. will uh, do. A, do I get a good look at it when it's sitting at the table? Yeah, absolutely. From your vantage point, you can pretty clearly see over the crowd of humans, um, the tallest of which are only like six feet. Um, and you can see down from what you see from your vantage point, though, it looks like a black wig and two humans or else you can't really tell from where you're at. Um, one of them in full plate, the other in like a, an assortment of leather armor or whatever. And they all just seem to be quietly sitting together. They're not causing much of a ruckus or anything like that. Hmm. But yeah, it is kind of weird that there's a wig sitting in a chair by itself. I mean, then I guess I'll go walk over to the table and lightly start poking at the wig. Hey! Uh, Oh, he's coming over here. As you get to the table and you reach down and uh, lightly poke at the wig, uh, it moves. Hey! Hey! Hey, you! Hey, hands off the bun! Yes! What are you? Who do you think you're talking to? I I don't know. I thought a wig a second ago. A wig? You've seen a talking wig? I've only seen three in my lifetime. Where have you seen uh, these talking wigs? What? Where have you seen these talking wigs? Uh, I, don't, I don't remember. When you do, tell me. Okay. Um, so about five minutes passes, and again, the waiter or server is back. Um, he puts down a plate a large plate with a like pork steak cut out into it. Um, nicely grilled and seared and stuff like that. And he hands that to you, Kyler. Once he puts that down, he then produces another smaller plate and puts that in front of you, Tiny. And it is about, it is five uh, curly pigtails. Um, one of them still has some blood on it. Uh, and as you pick them up, they feel kind of warm, but they're not cooked in any way. Hmm. I, I give it, I give one a little sniff, and I examine it a little bit, and I get it really close, and I squint my eyes. Perfect! My eye, my These eyes are in great condition. Thank you, waiter! And I stuff them in my bag. <laughs> you, my, mm, my, my pleasure. Uh, any, anything else? You, sir, uh, as he looks at, um... The dragonborn. Uh, can can I do anything for you? It's rare to have you in our parts. Uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, you know, just in town, adventuring around, exploring, you know. Um, I would like two of your uh, largest cups of ale, and uh, I think I'll start there and think about it more. Oh, oh, hey, yeah. waiter. Mr. Y- yes, mistress. Can I get another thing of ale? Absolutely. And can I get a cupcake? A cupcake? I'll, uh, uh, I do have sweet rolls. I can handle that. You put extra glaze on it. <laughs> Only the finest for you. Um, he looks at back at you, Dolahan, uh, 
and he does produce the wine. He puts it on the table and says, this is my finest bottle in the establishment. It will come at a price. It comes directly from the vineyards out of Alexa. This is a royal vintage. And how did you come to acquire this royal vintage? It is from the same vines that the royal wine is produced, um, but it is a marketed version of that, although albeit expensive as such. But um, I have a brother in Alexa who works in vineyards, and it comes in quite handy when you own a tavern. And he smuggled you some of the queen's... No, 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 no. This is not her private stack. Also, I believe you meant the Duchess. I've seen that symbol before. No, you haven't. I no, feel... I'll, I'll sort of cover it up as I reach across to grab the bottle and just drink it from the bottle. <laughs> I go and I kind of put my hands on the table with myself up to kind of like peek over there and see if I can see anything. Um, You can roll... Go ahead and roll oh, I was going to assume that I couldn't see anything. Well, I mean... Okay. Let's do it. Yeah. Oh. Or perception, I mean. Not investigation. First, First roll. roll. I forgot. I just click on it, right? Mm-hmm. Hey. Hey. She sees a table. No, I mean, you are able to lift yourself up, and you catch, like, a glimpse of, like, a faded green and, like, a winged woman. Um, but he's able to like kind of cover himself up before you're even able to really get a glimpse at what he's talking about. Okay. But you do notice that there's a symbol there, and he did pointedly cover it up when it was brought up. Um, at that, the waiter walks away and leaves you guys again to your devices. As the waiter walks away, I'm like, yeah, I want more pigtails and some potatoes. Hard-boiled. As, as he walks away? Yep, okay. as he walks away. Couldn't okay. have ordered that while he was here doing his job. I could have, but I didn't. What are you using them for? I'm giving them to you because I want to know what you're using them for. Oh, no, I've got plenty. I just needed five. Nope, you're getting more. I'm not paying for that. Are you going to pay for that? Sure. Oh, thank you. You guys are an interesting bunch, aren't you? As the giant lizard. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not my fault I was born this way. It's not, your fault. it's not your fault you're short either. Your fucking pokes random wigs. Such hey, disrespect. I lightly poked it. Speaking of, can I can I floof them a little bit? They are quite soft. No, you may not floof my buttons. All right. I don't even know you. I mean, you... That's fair. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I didn't introduce myself to... None of us did. Do we even know each other's names? I know mine. No, you have not introduced each other. Not. Well, uh, since I brought it upon the table, I'll start. My name is uh, Vorag. Who are uh, who are all you fine? Uh, Vorag. Short things. Vorag. Bo Vorag. I write that down. You write that down. And Vor. Vorag. Vor. As if as if Vor. you are voracious. Voracious. Hmm. That sounds so friendly. I mean, it was named after one of the uh, legendary black dragons, so uh, unfortunately not friendly at all. Right. Yeah, Roll okay. history. Tiny Me? and yeah. okay. um, Kyler. Yep. <laughs> Rokey yep. dokey, you don't know shit about no black dragons. Continue. Uh, yep. <laughs> Neither do you, Kyler. You know chromatic dragons are usually bad. That's about it. I'm just going to eat this meal and hopefully it doesn't kill me. No, it's actually extremely good. And I'm going to drink this wine and judgingly compare it to my experiences. Probably some of the best wine you've ever had in your life. Like you're astonished that you found it in this rat hole of what you would consider a town. 
As he drinks the wine, I'm gonna look at me like, so the potatoes are good here? You got them all over you, so I'm assuming they're good, right? You're gonna find out very quickly if you keep that up. I, I did order them, so yes, you're right. You know, none of you ever gave your names. That's quite rude in a conversation. Rude? You're the one who came up and started poking my fucking hair. Talk I about rude. Big. I apologize. What kind... What... What fucking pubs do you go into that have random wigs sitting in chairs, sir? Just because um, you're super tall doesn't mean that you can walk up to something and poke it. That's right. rude. Always ask permission. I mean, you aren't wrong, but at the same time, I don't walk into many pubs. I don't know if you've noticed this, uh, this area tends to be a little, uh, racist. <clears throat> Listen, Lizard, I don't need you coaching me on the manners of this land. And, Says the potato there, uh, uh, and there lies my point. Okay, so I, there, and I'm like, fine then. So I get up on the table, and I walk over to him, mm -hmm. and I start poking him in the nose. <laughs> Can't How do you reach? like that? I, yeah. I find on the table, she can't humorous, do. Actually, yes. Uh, I start poking them on the nose. See? How you like this? Huh? It, it's quite no, humorous. Not very friendly. No. I, Wait, I, think it's, I think it's quite friendly. What are you talking about? You could be punching me in the face. Can we do that? Uh, Is that a thing we can do? I can I bite mean, you too, I guess. You so I guess you have a point. Back, I don't you recommend know, that. For someone who, who has vor ferocious in their name, you're actually pretty nice. I mean, just because I was named after a very uh, violent being doesn't mean I'm violent. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm gonna go and sit back down. You guys watch. Where's my ale? The, the gnome stumbles across the table and sits back down. About another ten minutes go past. The uh, bar owner does come back. He has two... Like almost gallons. Well, they're not like gallons. They're like half gallon sized mugs. And he puts them down in front of Vorgoth. And then he slides another normal sized ale to Tiny. And says, will anybody else be needing anything? I don't say anything because uh, I'm too busy drinking it and chugging it. Yeah. While he's uh, in front of me, I chug and down both of them and ask for a... Uh, a large cut of... Uh, actually, just give me a whole pig's leg. It's the whole damn thing. Um, certainly. A lot of pig requests today. Uh, and he walks on. Oh. <laughs> I don't think I'm getting those potatoes. I mean, the place is called the pig's tail, not the, uh, the potato eye. Yet they're serving ale. Ah! And I slam it back down. That's really good. And how are you feeling after that? You are kind of uh, small. I don't know how well you would handle alcohol. Roll what? a constitution check. Oh, boy. A constitution Me? saving throw. Oh, yeah. boy. Wait, which one is this? Constitution oh, saving throw. Yep. You feel fine. I feel great. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I'm not talking about anything. I was asking you how you felt. I mean, I may be small. I may be tiny. Speaking of which, my name's Tiny. I need more ale. Is it... Is it Waiter! Tiny? What? Is, is your name actually Tiny? Yeah, of course my name is actually Tiny. Do we have to call okay, you so actually what? every time, or just Tiny? So what is your name? My name is Tiny. Wait, you want my full name? No, no. What's your name? Potato? Tyler I... I mean, uh, Foster. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, Tyler who? Tyler Foster. Tyler Foster. Okay. Who's your name really, Kyler? Yes. Oh. Okay, then. I got nothing. Waiter! I got nothing. <laughs> Here, try some of this, and I'll pour some of the red wine in her glass. But only, like, a tiny little bit. Yeah. Well, I, I'll look at it. I'll swish it around my my ale mug. I'm like, hmm. I smell it. Ugh! This stuff's really good. I've never had 
wine before. It's surprisingly good. I may have to tip. Bottoms up! I what, uh, what would you be tipping? The table? <laughs> I'm gonna just oh, sigh. That's, oh, that's, palm. Oh, that's pungent stuff. Oh. Yeah, so as oh. you take this sip of wine, it is an experience you've never had. Um, it's extremely sweet. You do taste like the fruit, um, and it's very smooth. Um, there's no like bite or anything to it, but it does leave your mouth with an extreme dry feeling that you're not know. used to from drinking something. <laughs> As she drugs the wine, I'm gonna pull uh -huh. my glass of water closer to myself. Mm -hmm. Hey, you. You with the with the eyes. We in the all face. Have eyes. We all with have the eyes. eyes. Okay, I get up on the table and I walk over to mm -hmm. fucking Chijin's character and I fucking I like poke their cheek. Hey. Hey. Hey, can 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 I have some of your water? Why do you want mine? We got more here. I don't know where the waiter is. <laughs> I downed my glass of water in front of her. Noted. So oh. you watch, as you ask him for water, you watch him just take it and just chug it all down. Oh. oh. I, uh, I lean down to uh, okay. Tiny and whisper in her ear, uh, so uh, remember that racism I talked about? Yep. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, no, nothing. Nothing at all. Sit back down. I'm a human Fucking, sitting I'm with an elf, it. a lizard, and a gnome. You don't know and, what I am. And yet you've You're only clearly a half elf. everyone <laughs> except me. I'm still doing this. <laughs> the waiter does eventually come back uh, and puts a small plate in front of you. And it's a sweet roll that you requested from earlier. Um, it looks pretty good, but you're pretty like connoisseur of sweet rolls, so that's to be determined. Um, I motion to the waiter with my empty glass of water, and then I point and I say she wants one as well. He just kind of curtly nods. Um, he's seems like he's getting a little frustrated with you guys. Uh, and then he does put like the leg of ham in front of you. Oh, uh, uh, How, how much, much does does this table total come to so far? Um... Well, with your wine, um, sir, it will be, hmm, I'll call it five gold. Oh, well. I, I told you it was quite a pricey wine. Uh, hold on a moment, and I'll dig, in, dig into my, uh backpack and I'll retrieve uh, a small bundle of coins and just hand it over without counting. It's like a, it's like a predetermined amount of like a small bag that's mm -hmm. been pre-counted. It's 15 mm -hmm. gold. And you're just not going to say anything to him? No, I'm just going to hand him the 15 gold. I make note of where he keeps this gold. Okay. Do you like write that down or anything or are you just like making a mental note? Mental note. Okie dokie. Uh, yeah, he takes the bag from you and then kind of looks at you and feels the weight in his hand and he can fully feel that it's way more than what you said. Um, he's like, are, are you expecting me to count this for you, sir? I mean, are you assuming that's not enough? I assumed you could tell the difference. Oh, no, it is more than enough. That's why I was a little confused, sir. Well, I'm assuming that one, and I'll point at the, the Dragonborn, will be requiring more and I am feeling generous despite well I appreciate it if you need a room for the night it is yours as well Excellent. Um, and he walks away
<laughs> well, uh, I guess I'll thank you for the meal. Oh, yes. her for real. What? Oh, good. She stuffed her face with the. Oh, her for real. Yeah, for real. Oh, what? Um, so you guys. Yeah, you guys watch as Tiny stuffs the sweet roll into her face. <laughs> Tina, please don't talk with your mouth full at the table. One more time for the people in the back. <sighs> I like sit there, just sit there, like try to like chew it all down, fucking swallow. <clears throat> it's tiny. Yes, I know your name is small. <sighs> sure. If, if you even. if you would like, I'll uh, I'll bop them on upside the head. No, that won't be necessary. If we just go along and hitting everybody that isn't nice to us, then you know, what good is it gonna do us? You can bop them for me if you want. Well, I'm used to it. That's what happens when you're small. It could be worse. You could be tall and hitting door frame. Yeah, but you get to reach the highest books in the library. There's nothing good I'm, on those shelves, I promise you. I'm sure he has trouble reaching the shelves that you reach easily. This is also true. Yeah, bending over hurts. Um, so uh, eventually you guys do get everything you want. The night starts to kind of wind down. Um, the tavern is starting to like fill out a little bit. Um, tables are starting to open up. That kind of stuff. At this point, you finally get your first look around the board. Everybody go ahead and roll perception. The passive? No, just perception. Oh, man. Oh, I did okay. <laughs> I did um, average. So, Tiny and uh, Vorag... You guys are like, you know, talking to each other, um, exchanging pleasantries, um, asking about, you know, where each other are from and that kind of stuff. Uh, so you're not really paying that much attention. Kyler and Stisk, on the other hand, you guys are able to take a good look around the room. Um, you notice that everybody that's here is mostly you know, like traveling merchants or... You know, some some type of traveler or something like that. Um, it's not a very big local type establishment. Um, you also notice that there is a large pegboard next to the door full of important looking type paperwork and flyers and stuff like that. One of them with a wax seal on it. Um, you notice, again, everything's starting to die down and become quiet. Uh, and it brings like a cozier atmosphere to what is going on. And yep, that's that's pretty much it. I'm gonna stand up and go check out this uh, sealed thing. Okay, dokie. Uh, while he does that, I'm gonna see if I can find the waiter or the server or whatever you call. Yeah, them. you can. So he's like at the bar, basically at this point. I go, I go up to him and I'm asking. Uh, earlier you mentioned it doesn't normally get this busy. Why was it particularly busy today? Um, honestly, I'm not sure, sir. There seems to be an influx of traveling merchants, but the relative peace between Alexandria and Valinesca has allowed for open travel through the river gate, which is not something that we've had in a very long time. I think people are beginning to... Uh, explore their boundaries, you know what I mean? Um, I do know that a lot of goods have come up for recent reevaluation at the customs house, so I'm sure many merchants are here to get their things reevaluated for free trade. I say, all right, and I walk away. Town, I'll mutter under my breath. <laughs> um, so as you look at the board, um, you see the average like 
wedding announcements and looking for like guild announcements and stuff like that. Um, you notice two things. One thing that you notice is a small flyer that's printed out um, and it seems to be, let me pull up his name. <clears throat> it seems to be like written in. It's not like professionally scribed or anything like that. Um, and it says, please, I've everything's been taken from me. Help an old man outside the city. I, I can no longer go to my home. And then it's signed Harold. And it has a seal on it? No, no, no. This is not. This is just, it's like next to that. It, something about it caught your eye. It's like the way yeah, it was I'm written and stuff. Um, and then the one that's got the seal on it is a guild notice. It's a flyer. And it says, looking for adventuring groups for the Order of the Red Ivy. Roll a history check. So, you do know about the Order. You've heard them before. <laughs> Not you, Tiny. <laughs> um, you do know about the Order, Kyler. You've heard of them before. You know that they're not like a knight's order. They're more like a mercenary group type thing. Um, you've also heard this when you talked to your patron. Um, that moment when he spoke with you face to face. Um, he didn't say order the red ivy, but he did say be on the lookout for red ivy. Which it, to you didn't really mean anything at the time. You're kind of like weird, stupid Benefor or whatever. Um, but it is kind of resonating with you now um, as you see the flyer. Um, basically, the flyer says that they're looking for a new adventuring group. And that as long as the adventuring group can pass the trials, they will be accepted into the order for fame, fortune, women, and everything else in between. I'm going to take the flyer off the wall and mm -hmm. Harold's note. Mm -hmm. I'm going to walk back to the table and I'm going to slam the flyer down on it. I think we've all been brought here for this. And I'll tap the tap the thing. What's what? What's this? Let me see. Uh, Order of the Red Ivy. That's a funny name. It's pretty, though. Do I know so, anything about this? Oh, you can or roll history. you want me to roll history? Yeah, okay. you can roll history. Day. Yes. Day. Oh. So Day. You, do, you do know about the Order of the Red Ivy. You yeah. know that um, they used to be a group from Hobloin. Um, you know that they were formed out of three members who... Um, we're just known for being all around great adventurers. They had done a lot of things for Alexandra and Valinesca. Um, and that at one point sometime in your career, so the rumor says they fought a ancient dragon. Um, and at this point you can't really tell what's rumor and what's true. Okay. But you know that the story is that they fought an ancient red dragon. A God was involved they were given powers and now they reside in a lair inside of the mountains um, in Valinesca and that the Order of the Red Ivy is their mercenary group that does, for the most part, help the help the poor and needy. They fix things, they do city problems, but they do them for a price. Um, and this has led the Order of the Red Ivy to be basically its own private army standing against Valinesca and Alexandria um, and having the unique ability to operate within the two um, kind of whenever it wants. Okay. Um. Like they would, in fact, at in Delft, they would have like scholars and stuff working with the other scholars from the college. Okay. So I would, on I would have possibly worked with Yeah, them at some point, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I kind of remember a little bit about them. Um, I think I worked with a couple of them. One of them was named Gary. He was, he was okay. He was nice. But, um, I don't, I don't know too much about this whole riches and women thing. Why would they have an ad like this up on here? 
Um, you do know that it is kind of weird to see ads for them. It's more yeah. of like a who you know type thing. Um, yeah. So the prospect that you see an ad is kind of excited. Am I at the table? Yeah. Well, this is definitely in common. Um, as I've never really heard of them. Um, never mind. Actually, <laughs> you I've never shit. really actually heard of them. Um, you know, recruiting out in the open. Recruiting into what? Red Ivy. The Order of the Red Ivy. And that's a big deal. I guess they don't educate your kind. Okay. Good. So I'll slide the flyer towards him. Mm -hmm. you, you, you can read, right? Can you walk? Don't insult him. That's mean. I'm just clarifying so that I don't have to read it to him. So, uh, assuming they're talking to me at this point, I'm going to assume those two gallons of... Well, no, they're, they're talking to Stis. No? Oh, okay, good. I'm going to slide the flyer back. Says, well, things how you're offering, read it to me. No, no, you, you can read. Okay, so the Order of the Red Ivy are strong enough to have their own private army that doesn't offend the Duchess. What's an army? Now you're just playing dumb. No! <laughs> Upward. So, yes, to you, um, Kyler, the fact that there is a essentially standing private army that is able to operate in Alexandria and not offend the duchy or more importantly the 12 um is foreign to you in fact you know for a fact the only other army that you can think of that would be within inside alexandria is the city guard of dwarian and you don't necessarily count that as an army i mean they're half the size of our army so i mean yeah that's like, a short joke i get it it's pretty funny. Pretty horrible. Uh, um, but yeah, so that is kind of weird to you, and it's it's definitely intriguing for sure. You all will have noticed that he did call her the Grand Duchess, or the Duchess, and not a queen or anything like that. Hey, I was corrected by that commoner. I mean, what? Yes, you were. <laughs> I was trying to blend in. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's that's basically uh, what you guys have gotten. Vo Vorag, did you want to do something? Um, uh, I guess I'll gingerly grab the notice and uh, read it to myself and mm -hmm. uh, do a thing. Give me a moment. Mm. When he grabs it, I'm going to point towards... Uh the potato night and I was like, do you want to read it to him? Are you going to ask if he can read or not? At this point, I'm starting to think he has more brains than you. Uh, well, we clearly see the thinking is not your, th your strong suit. Oh, man. <laughs> it's so good when a party this small has issues like this. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no. At this I, point, I'm just at this point, I'm just kind of sitting here, like, ooh, okay. This is... Yeah. After after finish after finishing reading that, I'm just gonna put it back on the table. I'm not gonna really say anything. I'm just gonna continue gnawing on the leg. Gnawing on the leg, chewing on that bone. Yeah. I got you. Wait, did you change it on purpose? Yes. Is that telling us to go to bed? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kyler. Yes, Buns. It's tiny. Tina. <sighs> Skyler. Oh. Yes. Uh, wait, is it Skyler or Kyler? Because that's really confusing. You just confuse yourself. It's Kyler. Oh, okay. So, Kyler. You think that this is. This is for us, and this 
and we should like just do this thing. I mean, I you I know, see I no thought... other I see no other reason why the four of us from completely different styles of life would end up in the same place at the same time with this notice. I mean, I was just looking for pigtails, but I mean, that was just me. I mean, I was just exploring. Oh. Yes, sure. we're, all, we're all here for a greater purpose. But anyway, that's besides the point. If you guys aren't interested, that's up to you. I'm going to go investigate this. I'm also going to investigate this, and I'll put the, the Herald notice down on the table. But you need not worry about that. I, I shrug and I sigh. I'm like, well, I did come here for pigtails, and that's all I really planned for. So I guess I'm in. I get back on the table, and I put my hand out to him, <laughs> shake his hand. Do you accept your handshake? Uh, yes. Okay. I will try not to crush her tiny hand. Yeah, right. I try um, to squeeze his hand really tightly. Roll a strength check. Me? Yes, yeah. Okay. I have gauntlets. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You... <laughs> It's just like squeeze as hard as you can to the point where you're like, uh, or whatever, and he like can't even feel the pressure of your hands on his. Deal. At this um, point, I'd like to join just to uh, just to keep following this rather amusing gnome. <laughs> well, Her name I've got nothing else to lose. I'm gonna tiny. stick my hand out towards Kyler as well, I'm away. and see if he shakes. <clears throat> Does he? I didn't hear what he said. He said he stuck his hand out to you to see if you would shake it. Oh, yeah, I'll shake his hand. Okay, well, he does that. I'm going to roll slide of hand to see if I can unbuckle his gauntlet. Uh huh. Oh, boy. Yep. Oh, boy. All right, and I'm just going to smile and put my hand back and be like, all right. Um, As you move your hand back. You can feel like the gauntlet like kind of slipping, which is weird to you because it was just perfectly tightened or whatever, and then it falls from your hand and just like thuds on the table loudly. I would like to uh, start hysterically laughing at that. When he starts laughing, I start laughing. <clears throat> yep. So now everybody's laughing at the uh, fallen gauntlet. Oh, I'm not. I'm distracted by Whoa. something. I think I'm staring at like. Like the a other moth two. or something. Also, did anybody read the other note that he put on the table? Apparently not. I did. Oh, the, the one for Harold? No, I heard the name Harold, so I didn't read the note. Okay. I read it. What's this? Let's pick it up. So, Harold. Yeah, you see, it, like I said, the, a handwritten note um, asking for assistance for an old man outside the gates who's lost his home and can't go back. Oh, poor guy. I'm going to quietly put my gauntlet back on. Almost as if I may be used to having things fall off. <laughs> um, at this point, everybody roll perception. Okay. You got it, boss. <laughs> mm. Nope. <laughs> oh. Okay, good. Um, all right, so this is the point where we're going to take a five-minute quick break. Everybody go get water or go pee if you need to. Um, and we're going to set something up. Okay. We'll be right back. Uh, party yeah. break.
Are we back? Did we all make it? Hi. Hello? I'm here. Give me just a moment, though. I need to put something down. Yee. Bum, 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 bum. So I would like to point out, um, for those of you that are here, this building. Is the okay. inn that you are in. Okay. <laughs> that face. Hmm. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what'd you think her token was going to be when she decided to use no, that face? I, I knew what it was. I just forgot what it was. <laughs> I just enjoy it every time I see it. I don't know what it is about that uh, drop nose misappropriation of a face, but it gets me every time. Right? It's just so fucking funny. <laughs> Forge back. Yeah, I, I've been talking. Dully. Yes, we're all here. Okay, good. All right. Um, so as you guys are talking about what we're gonna do and everything else, um, you hear a blood curdling scream from out in what you presume is the alleyway. Um, it literally stops everybody in their tracks, uh, and then you see two women bust through the door. Um, slamming it open and saying, "It's a monster! They, they've..." And she faints. Uh, can I roll for history to see if this place has any like lore legends for sure. stuff like that kind of happening? Yeah. Wish I could find it again. History. Not that you've ever heard of, to be completely honest. Hmm. All right. No voice. <laughs> Used on something that didn't give you any information. Which is perfect. <laughs> Gotta love it. Anybody else or anything? Uh, nope. Yeah, I'm just kind of sitting there like. Try. Oh, and catch the woman, but obviously I'm way late, so I kind of like end up in front of her with my arms out, but she's already on the ground. Yep. Tell me he still has that one gauntlet off his hand. No, nah, he fixed it. Oh. Smooth. I guess I'll uh, walk over to the uh, the woman. And, uh, do we do we have a do do we have a healer in in the tavern? Hello, healer, <laughs> healer. Uh, as you say that. Yeah, as you and say I, that, I yell, I yell, waiter! <laughs> <laughs> the uh, waiter, the server, uh, runs to the woman, um, and he helps with Kyler to like kind of sit her up a little bit, um, and you know they fan her face, and she kind of comes to. He brings her some water, um, and, and she looks at Kyler and says, <laughs> "Outside, you have to help my sister, please, Sir Knight." Knight. Knight. Sir? Who? What? Knight. Him? I, uh, I'm, take I'm my still on the table. my belt, <laughs> slam it on my head, and I head out the doors. Hey! Can we roll a dexterity to see if he hits himself in the head with the helmet? <laughs> no. I was just thinking that. <laughs> Night guy! Hello. I've done that enough times. Also, <laughs> side note, um, out of character or whatever, click on your token, and you should see a little green circle. Yeah. Fill your HP into that. And then hit enter. So, like, click on the green circle, enter your HP, and then hit enter. 
from now on, whenever you take damage, all you have to do is click on the circle and then like write minus three or whatever. And it'll do it for you. Just out of curiosity, what are the red or the blue ones for? Isn't it my armor? Spell slots and shit like that. It depends on what you want to use it for. Gotcha, Isn't gotcha. it my armor? Or is it hit point maximum? Hit point maximum, girly. That's what it's okay. Okay. Uh, does this inn have uh, windows facing out into the street she just came from? Not really, no. Does it have a, uh, a way to get up onto the roof? No, not at all. Fantastic. Um, I mean, For you, actually, roll an investigation check with advantage. Roll an investigation. Okay, so you, with what you do, know how you would be able to get on the roof. So if that time comes, you would probably be able to work your way up there. Okay. Hey, poor guy. Poor guy, and I, like, tug on... I, I'm, I'm assuming I'm tugging on his pants, because I'm, like, super short. Yeah, 100%. Hey, four. 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 Four! I'm still tugging on his pants. Four! He may have forgot that he muted himself. Yeah. Are, are you still there? I hope we didn't drop somebody by accident. Oh. No. There you no, go. Uh, my mic was muted. Good job, me. Uh, I will crouch down next to uh, Tiny and look her in the eye and say, Yes, I'm bored. How may I help you? Look, I, I like you more than the rest of the group that was at our table, oh, but. Nice. If we're going to do this whole red ivy bullshit thing, mm -hmm. I feel like we might need him. So, should we follow him? I mean, I was going to stick my head I out just to see what was him. there. Let's go! But sure, and let's I go. Run out the door. Yep. I will I will walk out the door. You guys should have control of your own tokens, so feel free to move around the battle map. Which way is the alley from the main door? You have no idea. You just ran outside. You're standing right now. Your token is in front of the door. Oh, we're in front. Okay. Yeah, I was waiting for them. I'm gonna to go up to one of the, the ladies and ask, uh, "Which way did all of this happen?" She said the alley. Correct, and I'm asking a direction. She'll kind of just like point lazily, but she does point in this direction. Yeah, this That way it looks like an alley. I'm gonna look down there. I'm like trying. I fucking can't run. I'm super fucking short right now. Like I'm fucking. Um, how how much does uh, how much does Tiny weigh? Probably like thirty five pounds. I will pick Tiny up, put her on my shoulder. And this way, whoa! Oh God, I'm afraid yeah. of heights. Oh God, I've never been this high before. Am I flying? How tall are the buildings? I don't remember casting a spell. Um. Well, hi, Bor. The buildings are about two stories tall, uh, depending on where you're at. They're very crammed together. So it's that old English style type place. Okay, so I guess I'm like literally like right here. Mm-hmm. Bor, you yes, move very yes. fast. Or I do have long legs. Oh, yeah. That, yep. That's what it is. All right, Dillahan, yeah, stop guys. where you're at. Uh, roll perception. Okay. As you're rounding that corner and you look down the alleyway, You get like a better picture of what's going on right there. Uh, am I supposed to see something? Oh, and you I see, see that. <laughs> this is what you see. Oh, that. Oh. Ooh. Hmm. 
Isn't that pretty? <laughs> um, it's currently engaged in eating what appears to be the arm of a woman. Um, you can kind of see the body of what you presume to be like a young woman, maybe in her twenties or something like that, um, behind it, um, pushed off into the side as you walk towards it. Everybody roll initiative. Hold on before you do that though. We're going to say Kyler, 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 I think that's the lady. I'm hoping that's not Harold. I think that's I know he's desperate, but this is out of hand. I think that's her arm. God damn it. Out that might be her. Eating an arm? Yeah. That that might be that might be his arm. Do you know him? Yeah, so you gotta click on your person first and then hit initiative on your character sheet. That's what I did, right? Yeah. You did it, yeah. I was just God damn it, I both suck. Hey. Mer- um I really don't want to push this button. Roll it, baby. Oh, boy. Oh. Oh, okay. Then that's crap. I just wasted a really good roll, though. That blows. Can we just play that, that slow, like, slow motion music that they play that's all, like heroic and stuff and I'm just going to be slowly walking towards it and moving at normal speed. Okay. <laughs> and what, you trip? Really yes, really quick. Um, I'm going to take a screenshot. Do I have permission to put it in the group chat? Or not the group chat, the, uh, the Twitch chat because this is... Uh, oh, yeah. I didn't click my token beforehand. Put whatever you want. Uh, Hopefully it uh, allows you to. Oh, Links damn. might be well, this, fucked. This will be wonderful. Uh, well, it shows the 20 on the side there. You just didn't click your thing yet. Oh, okay. Never mind. That was what I was going to show was the uh, the 20 I rolled and then the 4 because I didn't click. All right. So it has begun. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, it got dramatic. And someone's chanting. Are we? The, are we not Stist. the only ones outside? Go. Uh, do I have any insight to, as to what this is? Should I roll for that, or you can roll for it using a bonus. Ooh. What do I know about them? Um, you know that it is an undead. Uh, it's commonly referred to probably as a ghoul, but you, this looks different than any ghoul that you've seen or read about. All right. And let's see. How do I check my range for my short bow? No, that's not the right button. The range it's for a short bow is set. Right so plus. Yeah. So you got so 80 to 320. Set? Every square is five feet. Also, oh, okay. on the left-hand side, you can use the ruler tool. All right. You can't shoot yeah. through buildings. I'm not that good? Not even slightly. No. <laughs> <laughs> how, how close he is. All right. I'm going to move over here if I got the range. And then I'm going to loose an arrow. All right. Go ahead and roll to hit. So click on the short bow. Uh, yeah, you miss. Your arrow goes wide past its head. Uh, and that kind of like snaps out of its trance and it focuses down the alleyway a little bit more at you guys. All right. I'm going to crouch down to make a smaller sight profile mm-hmm. and in my turn. Tiny. Okay. Uh... I'm technically still on top of yes. four shoulders, right? Yep. I have to figure out how long arm is my magic missile. Again. I need to read it again. If you use the, uh, the eye of 120, power. 120 feet. Yep. Okay. So I need my fucking ruler. You're well with it. Yeah. Oh, yes, you are. 
Okay, I'm going to do that. So, would I just roll that, or...? You just click on it. Boop! Uh, like your attacks and spell yeah. sheets. Yeah. And I want all three going towards there. Yeah, so... The I fucking I warn before I cast it, I warn I'm like Bor, stay very still. I have really bad depth perception, okay. especially in this height. Look, okay, here we go. Alright, so that does go off. You guys watch as this like um Vor, you hear this, you can't really see it. Uh you do see like kind of like a bluish light. Actually, what color would you like it to be? Would it probably be purple for you, right? Purple? Yeah. So you hear like a a crystallized thing in the air. You, it sounds like glass like coming together, and you see this like purple light with yellow kind of flashing around it. Um, and then all of a sudden, you see what appears to you to be an icicle with like a force behind it leave from right next to your head down the alleyway that you guys are facing. All Let right. me be a decent DM and pull up my spell book. Hold on. Oh no, I forgot. I forgot. Oh boy. Oh, oh boy, I wonder what you forgot. I don't actually know. <laughs> oh, I think Wait. I see what you forgot. An ice bolt shot in the opposite direction is what you just said? No, no, no. It shot down the alleyway, like towards the creature. Oh, okay. Oh boy. You hit them though, right? It did. Uh, hope. Okay. Yes, it did hit. Yeah. You did okay. do that damage. Okay. Um. Am I doing it? Max. No, you're. I'm sorry, you're good. I'm trying to get my DM. You don't side want me to work. do it. Do what? Oh no, no, no! Not for that. It doesn't always happen. It's not like an automatic type thing. No, I know. That's why I was asking. Yeah, no, no, no. You're good. Okay. And I would. Okay. Yeah, well, I'll talk to you about it a little bit beforehand. Okay. All right. It's homeboy's turn. He's uh looking a little disgruntled. Uh, Kyler, you watch these purple like crystals explode off of his body, and it does kind of like rock him backwards. You've never seen anything really like that before, to be honest. And you can hear he kind of hear in the background. Woo! Bullseye! <laughs> and he does move to get up in your proverbial grill. Um, literal grill. Yeah, this, uh, there is an arm now hanging from his mouth. Like, he didn't drop it. So there's, like, blood and gore and everything. Um. <gasps> oh, that's gross. What's your arm Tyler, class? Are you, are you gonna throw up? Are you gonna throw up? You need to come back here. Hi, Lark. You don't <laughs> look too way over there. I can't um, really see. Are you okay? So he swings at you with his mouth or with his claws, and it hits you. But the they're not like able to grab purchase into your plate or anything like that. So they don't really do any damage. He then drops the arm that's in his mouth, looks at you, and says, mm, "Food." And that's his turn. Good job, buddy. Oh. It's your turn. I'm going to give him what he wants. With a glaive to the face. Uh, you actually do manage to hit. Just enough. <laughs> so. Are you guys watch as this like, glaive kind of pierces through the air or something? That you, obviously, you saw him with it, but you just didn't pay any attention to it. Um but at this point it's very obvious that it's there and you kind of hear it like sing through the air as it comes down and cuts like a chunk out of his chest. Whoa, Bart, did you see that? Did you see that? I'm like tapping his head. Did you see that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I saw that. Are you oh! gonna, you're not going to move or anything? Nope, I'm going to stay right where I am. 
between me. I'm going to put myself between it and uh, everybody else. Vorag, your turn. Uh, All quick, right, well, quick side question. Is there a specific button to tell the system that it's two-handed? It's me and you will have to do that offhand because okay. it's like kind of coded. Anyways. So, uh, just to make sure, it's within sight, yes? For you, yeah, you can see it for sure. Okay, then I will uh, I will cast Chill Touch at it. Okie dokie. If I'm doing this right, I should just I believe that. Chill Touch, no, it is 120 feet. Okay, yeah, you do hit it, so go ahead and click on the word Chill Touch at the bottom. Oh god, that's really cold. Has nothing to do with ice, even though it's called chill touch. It's really cold up here. <laughs> also, I would like to make a note here. that the uh, <laughs> the uh, spell when used would I be able to tell if this creature's undead or not? Yes, you would. Once okay. you use the spell, um, all attacks against me from it are at disadvantage now. Right. Yep. It is a physical hand that just grips it. Yep. It sure is. All right. Anything else? I think it's this altitude. I feel it. I feel myself getting ready to nose. Are you gonna like move or put her down or? Oh. Yep. I'm sorry. I got sniffles now. Um. I guess I'll ask her. Do you want me to put you down, or are you good up here? Uh. I'm okay. Okay. So why we sniffling? I guess we'll just chill here. Okay. Disc. Uh, I'm going to move up a little bit there, and I don't exactly know how to do this, but how would it, how would I go about throwing a blanket over the ghast? Do you have a blanket in your inventory? I have three. Uh, where is it? You yes, can I have three. throw. Mm. Make a dexterity check. Okay. Yeah, you're able to throw the blanket on top of him. Uh, it's not like perfect or anything like that, but it is over him for sure. That does use your action. Yep. Okay, hey, I'm going to go back to crouching down and making a small sight profile. And that ends my turn. Tiny. Oh boy, okay. So I'm like sitting here, so okay. <sighs> Gosh, Why is there like... a blanket on this? There's a draft of... Because he's probably cold! It's cold out here! Oh my god. Okay! Okay. Um. Uh. How, hold on a second. I gotta. Oh, damn it, I think I'm too far away. Oh, wait, no. It's right there? Mm -hmm. <gasps> yes! Okay, um. I want to use Mage Hand. I want to take the blanket off so I can wear the blanket. God damn it. <laughs> 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 Fucking do it up, girl. <laughs> oh my god, it's so cold, boy. Um, click on Mage Hand. Yeah, there we go. So if anybody is uh, interested and isn't aware of D&D &D spells, Mage Hand is a spectral floating hand that appears at a point uh, and lasts until you tell it to go away, basically, or up to a minute. Uh, and you can use it to do anything you want it to do. So you said you want it to grab the blanket? And bring I'll it have to, to you. grab the blanket off the ghoul so then I can wear the blanket. Okay, yeah. So uh, it grabs the blanket and it is like halfway to bringing it to you. You guys can see like a blanket hovering in the air. Oh, come to mama. Oh, so cold. Oh, God. I should have asked for one of these a while ago. Oh, God. Oh, are you cold? Do you want one too? Oh, I'm all right. Thank you. Oh, okay. I'm just going to snuggle away this blanket. Okay. I let out a very loud sigh. Your AC is 20? Or, I mean, 18? Yes. Kyla? 18? Okay. Okay. I have my turn. That was it. What I want to do. So, <laughs> you watch as he, like, struggles once the banquet is lifted off of him, and then he goes to bite down. Um, this time, actually getting you and biting into your neck. Take... Oh, I had to find all the dice. No, he's biting him. That's rude. 
Yo, elf, you should elf person. Wow. You should try and help him out over there. You're closer than us. Can you get the up there? Was gonna make it so it couldn't bite you him, but that apparently didn't Take work. ten points of damage. What? I can't hear you. Ooh. Oh, this blanket is so warm. I feel so much better for. I'm, glad. I'm gonna need that back. No, it's cold. Hello. Did Just... did you did you get that, Kyler? Yeah, I I see my hit points in my bubble. We can't see your bubble. Only you can. Oh, I thought you could. I mean, I can if I click on you. I was just... I asked instead of bothering to click. All right. Um, first, I'm going to... get some retribution and... you know... Hopefully, kill him with this this mighty strike. Mm hmm. Decapitate him. Yeah, you hit him hard. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. I can't remember all those Let's ones. Get there. Um, and while leaving the glaive kind of half stabbed into him, but pulling it out with one hand, I'm going to touch my shoulder with my other hand and lay on hands myself. Negative. Thanks lay on hands is a full action. But it says it says it's an action. Right. You took an action to attack. Can't I use my move action for it? Nope. Oh. Okay, then. Well, I guess I won't do that. <laughs> Sorry, man. All right. Dead? Is that your turn? He's, I mean, no, yeah. he's not dead. He's real close. Borag. Hmm. Well, this will be uh, interesting. Um, we're going to cast uh, Sacred Flame upon the, uh, the ghast. Okay. Yeah. Does it hit? Yes, it does. And it apparently does right. four radiant damage. It does, in fact, do four radiant damage. Oh. At this point, it is looking extremely rough. It's hard for it to stand. It's kind of like hobbling around and stuff like that. Uh, okay, and is that your turn? Yeah, that'll do it. All right, Stis. Is it, is it still currently biting him, or? No, like backed off. Backed off. Okay. Uh, I can't possibly lance it right now, could I? Yeah. Is I know it's within range, but I wouldn't go through. Uh, what's his face? Would I? No, you'd be able to like move around. All right, doing that. Um, unfortunately, you're not really used to the heaviness of it or anything like that, and it's kind of you know you're still getting around the ro like the ropes and stuff, um, so uh -huh. you completely miss. All right, I'm gonna crouch back down. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to step away. My girl, tiny. Um. <laughs> okay. Well, now that I'm warmed up a little bit. God damn it. Um, Forsley, are you sure you don't want like a blanket or anything? Oh, no. I want I'm mine sure. back. I'm sure the uh, the blanket's quite large enough to have covered my uh, shoulders at this yeah, point. Yeah, for sure. I was just going to say, wouldn't it cover his head? I wasn't sure. If yeah, I mean, if, unless you took <laughs> consideration. I like, I go and I, I go and I take the blanket. I'm pretty go for it. I kind of put it, a little bit of a blanket on his head uh -huh. as I like wrap it around me. Okay, boy, there you go, sweetie. Uh... How many times can I use a spell again? If it's a cantrip, you can use it as much as you want. If it's one of your first level spells, you only mm -hmm. have a couple spell slots. So is that so I can only use it once? No, you can or use like that it. spell multiple times. To use you can only use it. Again. Yeah, let me see how many spell slots you have because I don't remember off the top of my head. I don't remember exactly how many I have. 
Um, you have two spell slots, so you can use any of your first level spells. Uh huh. Twice. Two times. You can use magic okay. missiles twice, or one of each, or whatever. Okay, I'll go ahead and do magic missiles again. Yeah. And you get those spell slots back um, once you rest. All right, magic missile then. Hey! Yeah! yeah. I like, I want to like, do I cast it with both hands or like? All right, you kind of use both hands to do it. You like work okay, it up Okay, so I'm like, like I'm holding, I'm like holding the blanket, mm -hmm. like with both my hands, trying to like cast it with both of my hands at the same time while the blanket's like in my hand. All right, well, you guys kind of like watch her dance around or something like that. And then again, three more magical purple yellow beams burst out, this time piercing both sides of its chest, and then the final one piercing through its neck and then exploding in its neck. Decapitated. Woo! And it's dead. I did it. Boy, did you nice. see that? Wait, did I you did. see that? You were under the blanket. Are you sure? No, you can no, see? I, I can. I you see want it. a recap? Oh, I, I can do a recap for you. I oh, need no, that trust, back. Trust me, I, I saw it. Uh, I oh. will. Uh, I'll also give you a solid high five for that. Yeah. Oh God, it almost knocked me over. Well, they high five. I'm gonna see if I can get the blanket back. Yeah, sure. What do I have to roll? I'm. I mean, are you trying to like steal it from her? Or are you gonna? Just try to gingerly pull it away. Roll sleight of hand. Yeah, so you're Jesus. able to like slowly kind of slip it off. Wait, 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 wait. I mean, oh, you wait, notice, wait, wait. but it's not. It like he does it very gingerly. Grab it back. <laughs> I'm not letting go of it. Neither is my hand. Strength check from both of you. Oh boy. <laughs> nope. Yep. Oh she, God. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. she keeps Give hold of that blanket. This back as mine. Let's try that again. All right, no, we're not gonna. No <laughs> we're not gonna keep doing this all night. She thoroughly bests you in the blanket. It's hers now. Woo. I need that back. Why? Because Are it's mine. Too? Are you Wait, didn't too? I hear you mention that you have uh, multiple blankets? You didn't hear me say that. I said that to yeah, we don't know that character. Yeah. Can we notice that there's multiple blankets on his person? I mean, they'd probably you be in his pack. My backpack? Yeah, they're, they would be in his pack. That's actually most of the time. Wouldn't you keep your blanket on the outside of your pack? And you'd keep nope. like a bed roll. No, oh, that's fair. That's fair. All right. All right. Um. I expend four of my lay on hand points on myself, and then I walk over to Rookie the dokie. probably extremely dead lady, and I will extend one point on her just in case. Oh, she did. Oh, oh four, 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 sweetie. And I pat his head. He's like, we should go over there and we should go check on him. He got a bit. Um, or he I'm looks gonna, constipated. I can't tell. Quiet little prayer over her. And I'm like yelling, ah! while he's trying to pray. Ah! Well, they do that, I'm going to search the corpse. It's like a two-second prayer. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to, like, look over and be like, what? Kyla, are you okay? I'm still breathing. Did you see so a healer? I am... I, I think... Bork can carry okay. you. He's super strong. Right, Bork? I, I mean, what does strength have to do with healing him? Oh, I meant carry his body to a healer. I mean, I, I guess I could. I'm quite capable of walking. Oh, okay, good. Uh, does the corpse have any identifying marks or loot? The ghast, I mean, the ghast. <laughs> I was going to say, are you about to go loot the dead girl? Nope. Um, go ahead and roll investigation. Investigate. Yeah, I'm going I'm to pick up the body. Nope, I see nothing. I'll, uh, I'll yell back and ask uh, if there was anything upon the, uh, the corpse of the ghast. Kyler, is she dead? I'm carrying the dead lady. With a missing, oh. bleeding stump of an arm. I mean, she could be sleeping. I don't know. Disarming people doesn't necessarily kill them. Yeah. Or, or is she dead? I, uh... She looked yeah, most decidedly dead. <laughs> oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so she, yeah, she's dead. Oh, okay. You walk well, back. Well, they do that. I'm uh -huh. gonna pick up the gas and bring it with me and bring it back in well not in but outside 
I guess one of us has oh, to okay. tell her sister, huh? I like look at everyone. So who's gonna be the one to tell the sister that she dead? I mean... Anyone? Um, is oh. the sister still unconscious when we walk in? Bueller. Bueller. She woke up. Um, cause <laughs> oh, she's yeah. the one that told okay. you. So yeah, when you walk in um, and you're carrying this young woman, who's, by the way, um, is a fair girl. She's pale. She looks like she's probably 17 or 18. Um, she's a human. She's got ashen hair. Um, you know, she's fairly pretty or was fairly pretty. Um, and when you bring her in, her now that you can see identical sister... Um, immediately like screams out as she sees her body um yeah i'm just gonna like crouch down silently and hold hold her there because i'm assuming she's gonna like come over yeah yeah i mean like as you like crouch down and stuff like that she immediately runs to her sister grabs her out of your arms and starts like weep like, like ugly crying yeah oh Four, can you set me down real quick, sweetie? I'm gonna, like, reach mm -hmm. across. Yep, I, uh, I, I gingerly set you upon the ground. Thank you. I'm gonna walk up, uh, walk up to the lady, and I kind of like, her. I like okay. pat her on, I pat the lady on the shoulder, and I go, "It's, it's okay, it's okay. I mean, it's not okay, but I mean, at least you have Tiny. your sister. Like, you know, she's not, Tiny. she's not Tiny. a whole sister." Tiny. You know, we couldn't save her arm because the thing outside... Hi, hold on a sec. I'm trying to Not let helping. her know what happened. I mean, she's got her sister. She's dead, but I mean... Yeah. Uh, ti <sighs> Tiny, I have to ask. Do you know the uh, the concept of... Not talking about someone's dead sister right in front of them while they're holding them? Recently dead, mind you. Um, I've never been in this situation before, so no, I haven't. Okay, well, normally what would happen is you would uh, try to give some space and. Oh, uh, oh okay, and I kind of take, like, right, okay. like, two steps back. Right. Kind of, like, take two steps back. Okay, space. Is this enough? And I try to, like, try to, like, patter while, like, tiptoe kind of reaching over, <laughs> try to reach, uh -huh, but I'm too yeah. short. It's okay. It's like this? That's, that is much better. Good job. Okay. It's okay. So, like I was saying, so, we, I mean, we can what? go wait, back wait, and get wait, the art. Wait, what? wait, wait. What? what? Let's let's not do that portion. Just just oh. saying that you okay. feel bad for her is good enough. Oh. Don't worry. Okay. I feel bad for you. Um Um as you say we... you feel bad for her, she just like like builds it all in and she can't breathe for a second and then she just lets it all out in like one breath, like wailing, oh. like banshee crying. You know what I think would make her feel better? I'll go get her arm. You stay right here. You stay oh, right here, miss. Okay, I'll go get the arm. And I just like, yep. I just kind of waddle on out the door. Okay. Anybody else? I'm gonna go get the arm. I'll be right back. I'm stare at Vor. Just stare. I'm I'm going to go follow the gnome and attempt to teach her why we don't hand the sister her dead sister's arm. Okay, so you follow the gnome out. Sent you a message. Yeah, I see it. Hold on. Um, so you follow her out. Anybody, like, Kyler, are you specifically trying to say anything or do anything? Um, I'm going to wait until the Banshee wailing stops and she sort of quiets down a bit. And then um, I'll ask uh, Ma'am, why were you out here tonight? Um, as, as she kind of like looks up at you, she's uh, like, you know, dry sobbing, trying to catch her breath. It, it's hard for her um, to even register that anybody's in the room. Um, and, and then she takes like a good look at you and she's like, you go figure Ives would never, ever be able to do anything. Leave me alone. Let me care for her. kind of like just stare at her in shock 
and then I'll shake my head and be like, I'm not sure what you're talking about, <coughs> but uh, let me help you. I'll, I'll carry her wherever you need her to be, go to so we can put her to a proper rest. And then I want to find out where that thing came from and why this happened, and I want to make sure it doesn't happen again. Right. As you go to, like, reach down to, like, help pick her sister up or anything like that, she made I, like, I, like, bust through the door. I got her arm! I got her arm! I walk in after um, just shaking my head hand over my face. I got her arm! Here you go! <laughs> I, like, literally walk up to the lady as she's, like, still down, still, like, sitting on the ground, and I plop her arm right in front of her. Here you go! She looks at you horrified and then notices that um, Kyler is trying to pick up her sister and says, Don't touch her. You've failed everybody enough. And then she looks around the rest of the room um, and like there's two older gentlemen there that walk up to her and help her pick her sister up and say, come on, Les, let's let's bring her outside. I'm going to stare at the arm that they probably leave. No, they they would have picked it up and like put it on okay. the, the chest of the woman. Very respectful of you. Mm-hmm. Or I thought. Uh, I'm gonna stare at the mm-hmm. uh, bloodied floor. Oh. <laughs> I'm uh-huh. just gonna be like pale and look like I'm sick and uh-huh. like in a state of shock, and then I'll just sit there motionless, deaf to the loud noises and people around me. Um, eventually you'll get bumped and pushed around as um, Raven, the owner, and one of his associates begin um, you know, trying to like mop up and sweep up the floor and they start putting down like sawdust basically to soak up what blood is on the floor and stuff. Obviously things that they're used to doing for bar fights, but now doing because of this. Uh, want to eat food there for a while because there's been a dead body inside of a bar. Yeah. Hey, we don't know about health, you know, laws and issues. Yeah, it's <laughs> medieval times. It's fine. Shit happens. Pretty much. Hmm. Also, uh, quick question. Did the uh, sister leave also? Yeah, she walked out with the two gentlemen that helped carry the body. As uh, did I... Go ahead. I was going to say, did either of them notice the, uh, the gas corpse we drug over to the inn? So, what I was going to say is as you and Tiny were out grabbing the arm and coming back, you did notice the gas course has now been covered with another blanket and wrapped in chains. Oh, okay. The what? Nothing, cat. You heard nothing. What? The gas... Another blanket. Bl- yeah, the gassed body that he drugged to this part of the alleyway has been wrapped in another blanket and covered in chains. Oh, yeah, I don't want that blanket. I want my blanket back. No, it's mine. No. I'll fucking spectral arm wrestle you for it. I'm just no. kidding. I already- <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep trying till you run out of charges. Um, yes, but he... It's, it's a cantrip. Stisk is <laughs> standing <it>. out... <laughs> Stisk is standing outside um, with the wrapped up guest. And the two gentlemen would have noticed the corpse there, like the body. They don't know what it is, per se. Um, but they'll have seen it when they walked out. All right. Um, as they uh, bump and shake me while they're cleaning, I'll slowly stand up. Uh, kind of stare at them. As in, like, I'm still on, like, that what the fuck just happened face. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I'll kind of shake my head to clear it, and then I'll like look to the the owner and ask him if he knows of any um, arcana guilds or anything that are close by. Like arcana guilds, is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, he'll look at you and say, uh, uh, I, "I'm not sure of." The... Uh, yeah, sure. In the Merchant Square, there's. Um, uh, people that are versed with magic and stuff. And what time is it? Like late? At it's night like probably 9 p.m., maybe closer to 10. Okay. Have any guards shown up from all this loud screaming and stuff? Not yet. Man, they're slow. Oh. 
Potentially, oh. yes. Man, that really wore me out. I'm surprised that shit actually worked. Yeah, uh, actually, you would be kind of proud of yourself right now. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm this is the first time you've used magic, and it's worked out for you. This is great. Boar, we must celebrate. I will buy you a sweet roll. I will <coughs> take. I will accept this sweet roll graciously. <laughs> uh, as you say that, uh, Raven gets up and uh, just points at like the cabinet back there and says, "Help yourself." <gasps> yeah, not like scurry on over there. Come on, Boar. Yeah, need someone tall to reach the cupboard. Yes, you would need the assistance of him to reach the cupboard. I know, that's why I'm asking him. <laughs> uh, I'm going to step outside okay. and dig into my pack, pull out a cloak, and kind of cover up my armor uh -huh. in like, a self-conscious way. Yep. When um, I see him get outside... You would see him gonna... stand outside. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm going to ask him, I'm going to tell him to, to watch this, then I'm going to go inside. Okay. Then I'm going to use uh, Thieves' Cant to talk about the situation to see if anybody picks anything up. Well, and uh, so, if there's somewhere I can go to get that investigated. That is not how Thieves' Cant works. It's you tell a story and then it takes extra long to use because you're you're spinning it through that language, right? No. No? No. Thieves' Cant is a series of symbols and code words that let other thieves know... I thought about it said a, something that it was a language. No, it, it, technically it's a language, but it's not like an actual language. Oh, it's a series it's of right. It's a series of symbols and code words that allow other thieves to know something about an area. So, okay. like a building might have a mark on it that in thieves' camp means this is a good place to hit, or stay away, or this is the property. So it's hobo code, basically. Yes, a hundred percent. Or you know, shadow marks from thieves guild and Skyrim. Yep, okay. that too. So then, seeing as how my character would already know that, I'm going to take this thing to... Do I know where the sheriff is here or no? Not necessarily. So, let me explain a little bit about Hoblin. You would know, and everybody would know, that there is... While this city is sectioned into walled areas, and it it's very obviously like... They built the castle, the town grew around it, they built a wall around the town more town grew around it they built another wall around that and it's made like districts there is always one huge avenue that reaches from the main gate all the way to the main garrison castle and it's large enough to fit like an entire army marching um in file down the avenue so you would know that if you walked out to that avenue and then drug the body all the way up to the garrison you would eventually come across a guards or B, you would get to the garrison and deal that. Or that take us a while, though, there. wouldn't it? Probably would take you a hot minute, yeah. Fuck. Uh, is there a nearby uh, merchant's guild? Because they mentioned there's a lot around in town, this area. I mean, you can look. When you go outside, you can use Thieves' Can and look um, to yep. see if you notice anything or anything like that. I'll try that. Um, so Kyler, while you're outside, um, and you're covering up, two city guards do approach you. Um, as you look at them, you can tell that they are not city guards. They are in fact, Alexandrian soldiers. Um, and they do have that air of like actual authority about them. You know that Alexandrian soldiers above all, um, are the law, um, but also on top of that, you know that especially in Hoblin, since this is essentially just a military base, they are especially like this. These are the people, you know what I mean? Um, they walk up to you and one of them looks at you and says, you, you look like you have an air of responsibility about yourself. What happened? And what is this? Um, I'll nudge the blanket with uh, my hand. Just uh -huh. kind of plop it over. Um, I don't know why he chained it up. Uh, this is the corpse of the creature that just ate 20 year citizens, and we've killed it, and I'm uh, mm -hmm. glad you finally showed up. 
Yes, well, unfortunately, this area of the city is not very well looked after by order. Well, <clears throat> I appreciate you being here. So you said that this is a creature, and at this point, the other soldier will have removed a portion of the um, face mask, or like the the cloth that's covering the face, um, and he'll say, mm, "This looks like the one from yesterday." Um, as he does that, Stisk will walk outside. Go ahead and roll investigation, Stisk. Okay, as you walk outside, first thing you notice is two soldiers decked out in full hardcore like chain gear and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of thing you're used to being around from your, you know, your backstory and stuff like that. Yep. Um, so you notice them. You don't really say anything. You don't make eye contact. They don't pay you any fucking attention whatsoever. As you walk around this little scare, you square. Let me just go ahead and... So, as you walk around this little square, you do notice Thieves Can't on this building. Mm -hmm. And on this building. Um, the stuff that's on this building uh, basically leads you to believe that this building is protected by the local Thieves Guild. Mm -hmm. um, the stuff on this building leads you to believe that this may mark an entrance to that Thieves Guild. Okay. I'm going to write a note and slide it under the door saying describing exactly what just happened but not listing who was there or who uh, or what was used to kill it. Just basically okay. saying there there was a ghast, it got killed, one of your citizens died, heads up. Okay. All right, but you're not going to try to like go inside or anything like that? Uh no. Okay, cool. All right. Um as this is going on, Kyler, you'll have noticed the discussion between the soldiers. Um, as they're not really paying you any mind, um, they're talking about the event that happened yesterday. Um, it seems a shame to just let it happen, you know, and they'll talk a little bit about it. But basically, you're catching words like, it, it seems a shame to let it happen if only we were able to actually protect this portion of the city. You know, they... I don't understand why this is still an issue. Maybe one day Regent Millard will change how he feels about it. Um, you're picking that kind of conversation up. Okay, I'll just quietly listen. Make a history check. You know that Regent Millard is the, not like the mayor of the town, because he's not. He is the owner and runner of the customs house. Um, so while he's not like the mayor of Hobloin, he works directly for the Duchess as like the purveyor of the customs house, which leads him with really more power than anybody else, making him like the unofficial baron of Hobbling, you know what I mean? So that's definitely a name you've heard before. And it doesn't surprise you to hear it come from a soldier's mouth. Um, Tiny and Vorag, you guys doing anything? You just stuffing your faces? I'm stuffing my face and Vorag's just kind of sitting there watching me. Okay. I mean... I'm, try I'm trying to give Vorag, like, Sweet, like I'll I'll split it, like I get a sweet roll, and then he gets a sweet roll, and then he's got like a pile, <laughs> of them, and I'm just like munching down on him right now. I mean, one for couple, me, but, uh... two for me, one for you, three for me, one for you. <laughs> yep. But yeah, no, just sitting there, uh, sitting there, just sweet rolling, I guess. 
That's all I'm doing. <clears throat> all right. What? No, uh, Kyler, are you doing anything else, or? Uh, nope. Not until I see what these guys are gonna do. All right. Just and just do, you, do you do anything after you write the note? I pound on the door quite loudly, and then I am going to just lean there. Okay. Eventually, the guards will uh, pick the corpse up and take it I with lost them. another blanket. God damn it. Yes. <laughs> yes, you did. I need to buy more of these things. <laughs> you also lost some chains. Yeah, I did too. Um. So yeah, the guards will are the the soldiers will pick up the corpse and start to walk off, leaving you pretty much standing in the street, uh, wrapped in your cloak at this point. Um, like as they pick up the body, I'll just like look at them and be like, "So this isn't the first attack of this type." Unfortunately, kind sir, no, it is not. We'll be in the garrison. I'm sure you can find the way if you do happen to spot anything like this. And then yeah. they walk into the distance. Yeah. Just let them go. All right. As this goes on, about 10 minutes later, if you're standing next to the door, uh, a little slit opens. Mm -hmm. And he looks at you. And he says, can I help you? I give him the note. Where are you from? Not here. Clearly. Why don't you come on in for the night and we can uh, discuss it. Mm. Is anybody nearby? To you, no. Fuck. Uh, I I say, can you give me five minutes? <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, I'm going to find the uh, the gnome. Okay, so you're gonna go and, run back inside the inn. Yep. And right. I'm going to uh, give her my backpack. And I'm going to say, if you make sure that there's nothing taken out of this or put into this, I will buy you five golds worth of sweets. Okay, and I go, I have my mouth full of sailors. Hey, 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 guys, sailor? So, ah! I do a thumbs up and shake my head yes, and I do a thumbs down and shake my head no. I'm like holding sweet rolls in my, uh -huh. in my hands, and I like, I'm sitting on the floor in the back chair for me, I go, uh-huh. Oh, it's not in my head. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. All right, oh. I'm going. I'm going back. Then I'm going to go inside. Okay. Ah. Kyler, do you go back inside? What are you doing? Uh, after like another twenty minutes, I'll head back inside. Just like I was getting fresh air and yeah, thinking I, uh, internally. I have something I would like to do at this yep. point. I will. Uh, I will hand uh, Tiny ten gold and say, uh, you saw nothing. You know nothing about what's going to happen with this pack. If anyone asks, you were eating sweet rolls. You, you do anything? You say anything, I'm Tiny? I'm going to... Uh, huh? What, what is he doing? He's talking to you. <laughs> what did he say? Sorry. Uh, I was like, ten gold, up. and uh, huh? you didn't notice anything happen with the pack. Oh, he took the bag? No, no, no. The, the pack that you just got. Yeah, you took it. In, and you see, you, you know nothing about what, if anything happened with this, you know nothing. And I have, like, I still have a sweet roll in my mouth, and I still have both of them in my hands. I'm crisscross, and I look up at you, and I'm like, ah, and I shrug, and I'm like, okay, and then I just start <laughs> eating more. All and right. And I will, uh, I will take the bag, and I will go into the, uh, the back kitchen. Uh-huh. And uh, I will, uh, I'll uh, whisper you the rest. Yep. Should I okay? Should I whisper you or Charity Top? Uh, you can 
DM me through like the slash W space. Yeah, that, that, that's what it I doesn't mean. matter either. Okay. Uh, do it to Charity Top actually, so they can see it. Okay. Should I tell you what I have in the bag first, or? I can see your character sheet. I have not the bag. everything's in there. I didn't bring everything to there. Oh well. Well, I have the bag, so I might as well you know look through yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go into the. Uh, yeah. But Tyler, that, at no, this no. point, it's about 10:30 p.m. and you're feeling pretty fucking ragged. Oh, I said I was out there for another 20 minutes and then I headed inside. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's about 10:30. Yeah. I'm gonna. As head you head inside, inside, you're feeling pretty ragged. Go to go to my my bedroom. Okie dokie. Um, Stisk. Yes. Alright, so you are... Basically, you walk back to the door. You knock on it again, and they open it up. Um, yeah. So uh, they open it up and they let you inside, and you are in what is essentially a hunting lodge. Um, you know, dark wood floors, all that kind of stuff, a nice little bar, uh, animals mounted on the wall. Um, you see the head of what appears to be a huge owl mounted to the wall. Um, many different kind of cool things. Uh, and as you walk in, uh, the gentleman turns to you and says, My name is Fringe. I'll take you to see my patron and you can explain to him. All right. Um, eventually... He walks you into uh, a large room past a door that he used some kind of like special knock. You're not very sure what it was um, or anything like that, but the door did swing open as soon as he was done. As you walk inside, um, there is a gentleman sitting on the other side of the table. Uh, and as you get a look at him, you can tell he's a goblin. And he looks at you and says... What? Fringe, why is he here? And Fringe will look at you and says, Apparently he thinks he's got important information. And then looks back at you. Do you know about the gas problem? No, I'm not aware of a gas problem. I'm more interested in monetary means of production. So you don't mind that there's ghouls running around town killing potential marks? It's not that I don't necessarily mind. It's just that Millard will do what he needs to do to keep the gold flowing. All right. I'm just making sure that you know that you've got gas going around, and clearly it's not the uh, the first one, because if it was, there would be a lot more talk about it. So this is either being covered up, or these people are being... Let's try to figure Or these things are being uh, released here. Mm, yes. Well, again, Millard will sh show us concern if there needs to be any. I appreciate your time. Now, please get the fuck out of my office. All right. I'm not quite sure I was brought in here anyways. Um, and I assume you just turn around and leave? Yeah. I'd like to uh, make note that... Uh during all that, I would have already brought the pack back and put it back where it was. Okay. Uh, let me read what you wrote. Got it. Okay. Dope. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so you, you managed to be able to do that before he even really gets back. Um... And then I assume you go up to the room that was showed you guys earlier? 
Oh, the, the one that we were told we could stay in yes. for the uh, extra. Yeah, might as well. All right. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty full. I'm ready for a nap. Oh. Yeah, you would be ready for a nap for sure. Uh, so yeah, at this point, you guys walk in. Kyler is already kind of laying down in bed. Um, there's it's a a decent sized room with six beds in it. Um, and you guys are able to pick your own or anything like that. Kyler's pretty much out by the time that you guys walk in. Um, would I be able to tell how uh, how asleep he is? I mean, not really. Uh, for As far as you're concerned, he's asleep. You don't really know if he's like in REM sleep or something. Okay, then uh, I would like to take the inkwell out of my... Uh, out of my bag and start uh, doodling on his face. Roll side of hand. Dull a hand roll perception. Four. Be careful. What are you doing? Shh. Okay. I'll go lay in my bed and I like crawl a little over to my bed and I climb on up. Hey, yeah. guess who wakes up? And I <laughs> hide under the covers and I just start Gosh, giggling baby. this whole time. God dang it. As you like 20. dip <laughs> <laughs> you dip like your quill into like ink or whatever and then you go and put it on your face and you make like one long line of black down his face and his eyes immediately shoot up in the middle. <laughs> I'll just stare at him. <laughs> I'm just laughing, like under the covers. I'm just laughing. I'm just honestly, I'm just gonna start laughing. Like it, it's funny, even if he wakes up. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't do anything or say anything? No, I, it, I, it, I guess I'll go he, get him something to clean it up with. If he uh, starts walking away, I'll just close my eyes again. Oh, god dang it. <clears throat> yeah, so all that happens. Uh, eventually, Stis, you do make it back into the room. I'm going through my bag first thing. Okay. Um, first thing you notice is, for some reason, you have unwrapped rations. And as you look at these rations, you realize that they're fresh and that they're pork... Um, and that these weren't your rations at all. For some reason, there is pork um, in random bits of your bag. Uh, there's a couple pig ears. There's a couple pig tails. Um, and as you like pull everything out to figure out where everything is, and you pull out one of your blankets, an eyeball falls to the floor that was wrapped in the blanket. Is everything I have there? Yeah, everything's there. I'm dead asleep. Some of it's covered in pig blood. Oh, at least I still got it. Hmm. I I don't quite know what to make of this. I'm going to gather all the pieces of pig, and I'm going to leave it outside my door. And while I'm doing that, do I know who's in which room? You're all in the same room. It's like a six-bed room, yeah. Oh, we are? Do I see my blanket from before? I'm assuming Kat's still wearing it. Yep. Yes, it is wrapped around her. I'm wrapped up like a sushi roll right now. You gonna try to take the blanket again? Nope. I learned my lesson from that. <laughs> All right. So at this point, everybody does eventually fall to sleep. Dull hand, roll perception again. Oh man. Or, I'm sorry, not perception. Roll a uh, d20. Aced it. <laughs> um, so you are able to sleep through the night. As you're sleeping, Delian, you get weird vibes. They're not like dreams, um, but your head is filled with that weird silver mist um, that you saw in the room where you met your patron. Um, at first, you think it's going to be a dream, and it disturbs you. 
Um, but it never materializes into anything. It's just, you just feel like you're surrounded by that mist. And that's where our story will leave off. So that's it for today. Um, we will continue next Sunday, same time, same place. Um, I had fun, guys. It was a good time. Yeah, same. A lot um, warmer now. You guys, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> with all those blankets. It's a yeah. good thing oh. I didn't put that six in the Constitution. <laughs> Cat, make sure to add ten gold deer. Golden up. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. You can't just tease Not us like that. My five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, Kyler I'm, survived. I'm, Kyler I'm, did survive. Wait, wait, so do I wait? So do I get wait? So do I get fifteen gold then in total? No, I, there was clearly something put in my bag, and the concept okay. was nothing well, put in or taken out. I got eighty-five gold. You guys I'm are right. Okay. Kyler did survive his first encounter. So GG. Yay! He survived on one HP, but he, he survived. survived. <laughs> can we roll to see if he rolls out of bed, falls, and dies? No. <laughs> I'm at nine so I, I can heal myself. <laughs> Oh, actually. But uh, uh yeah. <laughs> there's a uh, there's actually one thing real quick, uh -huh. Mac, and I'm going to whisper Cheddar so that no one sees this. Um, it's it's nothing too big. Just uh, everyone's back asleep at this point. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's asleep, including you. Okay. Well, then I would like to uh, I would like to attempt to wake up to do something while everyone else is asleep. Yep. Um, yeah, but anyways, uh, so that's where we're at for now. Um, we will have a brief recap for next episode when it happens. Thank you all for watching uh, and taking part. Again, big shout outs to everybody who's helped make this, Pixie Dragon and Plummet. Um, big shout outs to the players who are playing and making this an exquisitely yeah. amazing adventure. Um <laughs> It, it should be real, real interesting. Um, you guys have a great rest of your night. I love you all. And we will see you next time. Say bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>